Welcome to the Tonight Show, everyone. During what continues to be a very turbulent time, I just wanted to say to everyone out there protesting or people going back to work during quarantine, please stay safe, um, and we appreciate you. Um, we have a great show tonight. Uh, the co-hosts of Queer Eye are on the show tonight, and uh, their new season just came out on Netflix, and uh, we saw episode one, mm -hmm. and it is just great. They are just, it's, it's almost, it's comforting, but it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, it's beautiful, it's great. Uh, and that was only halfway through it. Oh, yeah. yeah even be with, to the end is just, yeah, it's fantastic. But we love uh, all of those guys. So they're on the show tonight as well as Christian Slater, uh, who has a new show on USA, Tuesdays at 10, that, honey, you'll like. Uh, it's like season two of Dirty John. It's a real... Oh, I'm in. Yep. Um, and then uh, our music tonight, she's unbelievable. And uh, Sia is on the show tonight. Oh. Yeah. And she has a motion picture called Music, and the song is called Together. And Sia is what I wish, you know, I, I, I miss seeing these people in, you know, being in front of these singers, because it's people like Sia that, and musicians will know what I'm talking about. I, she almost doesn't need a microphone. When she's performing, she's so good and like projecting, and it's like, wow, it's powerful. And I'm always like, wow, are we even using the mic? Because she fills up the whole room. And uh, I remember even her doing chandelier I want to say and I was like you're not gonna hit those notes it's like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I can't even whistle it what she was singing chandelier and she hit all the notes and I was like ah she was just amazing so what a great show tonight and thank you so much again for watching let's get to some news well you guys it's another rough week for President Trump though at this point I can just say well you guys it's another week for President Trump uh, CNN just released a new poll yesterday, and it doesn't look too good for the president. President Trump's approval rating is the lowest it's been since January of last year. That's according to a new CNN poll that shows the president slipping amid a chaotic week. Only 38 percent approve of the job he is doing. That is down seven points since just last month. Ouch. Right now, the only thing lower than Trump's approval rating is his underground bunker. 38%, to put that in perspective, more people approved of Lay's cappuccino-flavored potato chips. Cappuccino-flavored potato chips. Uh, incidentally, 38% is the same ratio of chips to air in every bag of Lay's potato chips. Uh, it's bad right now, even the New York Times op-ed section has more fans. <laughs> uh, you know, I know things are bad. Earlier today, Don Jr. changed his name to Eric. <laughs> and now Trump wants to improve his numbers by getting his campaign team from 2016 back together. Trump was like, we can do it. They're all out of prison now. So. Speaking of Trump's campaign, it looks like he's ready to get back out on the road. And now the president is planning to get back out on the trail. His campaign says they're looking to resume those big rallies in the next two weeks, despite concerns about the pandemic. Don't worry. Just to be safe, everyone gets injected with bleach on the way in and out. So actually, Trump uh, said that they're being smart. He was like, uh, when the rally ends, everyone will have to stay in the arena for two weeks of quarantine. So that's fair, right? Meanwhile, just when it seemed like things couldn't get any more upsetting, Trump took to Twitter this morning to offer a conspiracy theory of the police brutality incident in Buffalo. He said that the 75-year-old man who was shoved by the police could be an Antifa provocateur, and I watched, he fell harder than was pushed. Could be a setup. Yeah, it's pretty interesting uh, that this guy is giving a lesson on gravity from a man who stands like this. <laughs> It's almost like he's like free falling, like one of those flying squirrel guys. Defying gravity. Um, after receiving criticism from both Democrats and Republicans for that exact tweet, Trump followed up by tweeting, make America great again. Because when the new stuff bombs, you got to go with the hits. Well, I saw that Daniel Radcliffe released a statement condemning J.K. Rowling's controversial tweets about trans people. Many people have been surprised about her views, but I don't know, if you go back and read the Harry Potter books, uh, it, it kind of makes sense. There's a character that I forgot totally about. There's Hermione, Ron, um, 
Harry, and of course there was the fourth friend that I forgot called Wimpleton. I totally, well, here's a couple excerpts from the audiobooks. Should make more sense. Listen. We have to stop Professor Snape from getting the babbling thwagget, exclaimed Harry. Grab your wands, cried Hermione. I'm just going to say it, I'm not totally sold on this whole trans thing, said Wimpleton. Not the time, Wimpleton, yelled Harry. Wow! Use the port key to get to the jack lion declared Hermione. What kind of creature is that? inquired Ron. Does it have claws and sharp teeth? queried Harry. And is it a boy or a girl? It has to be one, not neither or both, said Wimpleton. Wimpleton, literally no one asked for your opinion here, shouted the group. We've only found 16 of the cursed Nobelinooks, Ron gasped. We have to hurry, bellowed Harry. But wait, Wimpleton halted. Can I just say the thing about menstruation is... He never got to finish his sentence as Hermione pulled out her wand and transfigured him into a tea cozy. And at last, Wimpleton was useful. But people are thanking Danny Radcliffe for speaking out against J.K. Rowling's tweets. It's an easy issue to get wrong, so just so everyone's on the same page, here's a complete list of all the things people want to hear J.K. Rowling's take on. Wizards. Uh, 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 uh,